Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Flick with the Montana State Library, and I'm going to introduce you to our state librarian, Jenny Stapp, which I do at all of these website chats. And um, she's just going to take it away. We're going to be discussing the ARPA funding that was recently approved by the State Library Commission. But just before you do that, Jenny, I want to remind everybody there's a lot of um, trading opportunities coming up that Amelia has planned in January. So check out Aspen for those. And um, we've added some new content to our Moodle site as well. There's a new course on disaster preparedness in our Moodle site. So if you haven't yet signed on, it's it's mtstatelibrary.moonami.com. And I'll post that in, um, in the chat. You set up your own. Um, log in and profile at that page and then let us know what classes you want to take so we can get you enrolled and that's about it i'm going to pass it off to you jenny thanks and thanks for every everyone for joining me it's a very chilly but sunny friday here in helena quite lovely out uh, as joe said i want to spend some time talking about the decision the state library commission adopted this um, on this past wednesday to appropriate ARPA funds for e-resources, e and Kara is here to help um, talk about some of those resources as well. Before we get into that information, though, I wanted to share with you just a few other updates from the State Library. Uh, you may not have heard that the State Library is working on a process to rebrand the State Library. We entered into a contract over the summer with an organization called Hoffman York. Uh, this is a marketing firm. They're actually based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but they have a location here in Helena. They have the major contract with the Montana Department of Tourism and has been helping uh, the Montana Tourism Department market the state of Montana to, to tourists. And so it's been exciting to get a chance to start working with them. They spent the fall collecting information from a variety of stakeholders, including our commission and our staff and key legislators and people in the governor's office and uh, issued some surveys. And they're in the process now of going through all of that stakeholder input to get a better sense of, of who the state library is, who our audiences are, and how we engage with the audiences. They shared some of their initial impressions with me yesterday. And one of the things they said they heard from librarians almost universally is that you feel the trust and the care that the state library provides to all of you. And that was certainly heartwarming for us to hear. It's, it, it really is a part of our culture here at the state library. And I'm, I'm glad to know that that comes across to all of you. I think that's a, a really important component of how we want to continue to convey our work, um, not only to librarians, but to other people. Sort of the two problems that we're hoping to address with this rebranding are the fact that a lot of people don't know about the State Library and the services that we offer. And even if they are using services of the State Library, they might not realize that the services are coming from the State Library. So there's a real disconnect there. Uh, certainly, we want to grow the number of users that are using our resources, and we also want to be able to take credit for the services that we're offering and to help people recognize uh, that when they're using our services, they're engaging with their state library. Uh, we have a, a lengthy timeline for this rebranding process. Uh, we'll be able to give a kind of a final summary report of all of the information that was gathered from stakeholders and sort of initial recommendations about how to proceed with the rebranding at uh, that information will be shared with the commission at the February commission meeting. And then there'll be kind of a handoff to the creative team at Hoffman York, looking at our actual logo and how we represent ourselves through various forms of media. We have actually said to Hoffman York that we're interested in exploring a possible name change uh, because so many people either don't know what the state library is and we have to explain what the state library is or they might confuse us with the Montana State University Library. 
Um, there are pros and cons on both sides of that discussion. And uh, a lot of people that Hoffman York spoke to uh, were either adamant that we had to change our names or adamant that we should not change our name. And I just said to them, that's why we've engaged the experts to help us figure out how we should proceed with that specific question. But um, don't be surprised if you hear us talking about uh, rebranding a little bit more in the coming months. We hope to maybe have some initial brand and logo recommendations by late spring or summer. And we'll be engaging our both our internal stakeholders and our staff, as well as our external stakeholders to get feedback from all of you about uh, your impressions of um, what, the, what it looks like and, and if we are in fact conveying who we are and what we do through the efforts of this rebranding. So we're excited about this project and look for more information later this spring or summer. I also wanted to share some updates with you from the commission meeting before we talk specifically about uh, ARPA funds. So one of the things uh, I wanted to mention to you and, and is shared here on my screen is information that we organized about state aid dollars and the impact of the 2020 census. Uh, we've talked in the last year about the 2020 census and the fact that state aid is directly tied to the 2020 census. We had some concerns about this census's use of differential privacy and what that might mean for urban versus rural communities and, and the impact on population counts. I haven't gotten a lot of really good, clear information about whether or not there were any sort of alarming discrepancies that came out of the census as a result of differential privacy. But we thought at a minimum, we wanted to do a comparison of what the 2010 versus 2020 census populations meant to uh, the state aid distribution. Uh, so this uh, dashboard is linked from the State Library websites. It's linked from the State Library Commission materials if you're interested in looking at it. Uh, the initial dashboard has some information about what state aid is and the amount of funding that's been distributed. Uh, you can see that prior to 2013, the State Library was distributing a little over $100,000 in state aid. That was an amount of money that was essentially in the State Library's budget, uh, and uh, it was subject to fluctuations within the State Library budget. Uh, after a state aid task force looked at how we were distributing funds, they made a recommendation to the State Library that we just needed to increase the amount of funding that we had. And the State Library and the Montana Library Association worked in 2013 to get a statutory appropriation, meaning that it actually says in Montana law that there has to be an appropriation of state aid. Uh, so that's why you see the big jump in state aid money in, in 2013 and when the 40 cent per capita appropriation was created. We of course had the zero funding in the 2017 biennium when the State Library faced those budget cuts and then the state aid was um, reinstitu reinstituted in 2019. That statutory appropriation sunsets at the end of 2023. And so in the 2023 legislative session, we'll be working with MLA to get that funding reauthorized going forward. So there's some information here about the history, the law that governs state aid. We've also put in some information about how that uh, appropriation compares to inflationary costs um, so that uh, people can understand the need for potentially increasing the amount of state aid that uh, is distributed. Um, there's a general summary here of um, then the amount of state aid that's available um, and that's been distributed. So you can see the 20, 12 amount was the amount prior to the creation of the statutory appropriation. You can see the 2014 amount here, and then the uh, 
2021 amount that just went out and you can see which libraries saw increases and which libraries saw decreases in their state aid. That's a result in changes in the population from the 2020 census. And so the dashboard also includes information about um, the total population in 2010 that was used to calculate the state aid distribution and then the population uh, changes in the 2020 census. So you can see a, a 9.5% population increase from 2010. So the total amount of state aid that was distributed did increase this year because the population increased that 40 cents per capita. But because of unique changes within individual communities, some libraries received more state aid and other, other libraries, a handful of libraries did see a fairly modest decrease in the amount of state aid. So again, we just wanted to, to put together a look so people could see what the impact of the census was on state aid. This information again is available through our website. We will be sharing this information with Montana Library Association and with the legislature as we start talking about reauthorizing that statutory appropriation. Are there any questions about this information? If you're interested, I encourage you to go out and take a look. I'm not seeing anything coming into the chat. Okay, so I need to figure out how I do more to, excuse me while I try to navigate my screen here, my little touch screen, not you. Isn't technology grand? Yeah, this, you know, the little control panel at the top of my screen is preventing me from getting to my, my uh, thing. Let's see if I can go this way. I'm going to close this guy out, maybe. Or I'm just going to go this way. The other thing I wanted to share with you uh, was just an overview of how we've been spending our COVID-related funding. This information is information that we've prepared uh, both for our legislative budget committee as well as the State Library Commission. And so you can find this story map both through our website as well as through legislative materials here. So I wanted you to be aware of this story map and hopefully you can all see it okay. And we do. Do you want to throw that link in the chat? That would be. Yes. And people can kind of open it up and follow along if that they have a second screen or it's just more convenient. Thanks. You bet. So I'm going to go through here. So you've heard us talk about some of our priorities for uh, COVID related funding. First, an investment in e-content and e-resources, an investment in broadband, including our hotspot program and our internal wiring program. And then we also received funding to procure a, or sponsor a service called Newsline, which is a program offered by the National Federation for the Blind, where they record Montana newspapers and make them available for people who are blind or low vision. Uh, and they can go online through their telephone and listen to the recordings of the daily newspapers. So through this story map, we have information about the progress that we've been making in spending those ARPA dollars and, and having an, an impact in, in support of Montana communities. There's the overall kind of summary information within the story map, and then there's an updates tab. And we will add update tabs each time there is a new budget committee hearing. We just had one this past Wednesday, December 15th. The next one will be in March, uh, March 15th or 16th. So each time we'll add sort of a quarterly update to the progress we've been making spending out those dollars. Uh, I'm gonna 
I'm going to come back to the e-content and just wanted to uh, give you a look at what we're doing with broadband. You know you're all familiar with the hotspot lending program. This is a, a great place to get information about the program overall. Linked within the story map, it, map is our hotspot dashboard where you can get information about what libraries are offering hotspots, the amount of circulation, the number of hotspots that are circu circulating. Uh, we're collecting voluntary sur surveys from users. And so there's information about um, the from respondents from actual users here as well. And then um, we are also, we did some device distribution. We're not doing any device distribution with our ARPA funds. We funded that through our CARES Act funds, but there's information about who received devices through the that initial amount of funding. And then apologize, I'm getting some network issues here. What I wanted to share an update on is the work that we're doing to improve some of the internal wiring in libraries. Uh, working with uh, through an application process where we worked to identify the libraries with the greatest need for improvements to their internal uh, broadband equipment, Wi-Fi routers and, and wireless access points and cabling. Um, we've then plan to prioritize investment of ARPA dollars to help address those libraries that are in greatest need. So through this story map, you can see which libraries we're working with. There's information within um, these dots about the libraries and the criteria that we used to make determinations about which libraries we were going to focus on and the, the needs that they have. We've been working with a fantastic contractor through CompuNet to go in and do an initial assessment in all of these libraries. Uh, as of early this week, he had visited all but two of these libraries, so he may be completed with that component of the work right now. And then with that information, we'll be procuring the actual hardware that needs to be installed in these libraries, as well as cabling. We'll be hiring a cabling contractor that can go in and update the cabling in those libraries where that's been identified as a need. Again, we think we can fund these upgrades to between 20 to 25, maybe a few more libraries, and we're actively seeking funds to be able to offer this service uh, to more libraries beyond what we can afford with our ARPA funds. I did wanna to say too about the hotspot lending program. One of our goals is to make sure that hotspots are circulating in every county in Montana. Uh, back in September, when we first looked at the statistics, we were circulating hotspots in all but nine counties. We're down to four counties now. So we're trying to figure out some, some partnerships. At least one of those counties doesn't have a library. So we're trying to figure out if there's a, a school or a, a library in a neighboring county that would be willing to circulate hotspots in those communities. So we're, we're slowly ticking away at, at meeting that particular goal. Uh, and then with regards to the e-content funds, I wanted to quickly mention that we are seeking requests for digitization projects from libraries, museums, and archives to add content to the Montana Memory Project. So if you have ideas for collections that you would like to see digitized, uh, please respond to Jennifer Burnell. She's the one that's collecting that kind of information. Uh, in the past, we've had just a tiny little bit of money to do that digitization work. And so the projects have been fairly small. With the amount of funding that we have, we're not putting any limits on the dollar amounts that could be available for these digitization projects. So think big. Uh, we're, we're excited to be able to add new e-content to the Montana Memory Project to support learning. We think it's really important that uh, as we're investing in this e-content, some of it is local to support learning about Montana as well. So the, the big news that I wanted to share with all of you, and I'm gonna jump over here to the updates tab is about um, 
some of the e-content funding that the, the commission authorized us to spend at their meeting on Wednesday. They've now authorized us to expend up to $720,000 of our ARPA funds. And there's information here about exactly how we plan to spend those dollars in what kinds of categories. And Kara gave a, a very thorough overview at the State Library Commission about the process that we went through to gather feedback from librarians and working with the Network Advisory Council to come up with the recommendation that ultimately went to the State Library Commission. Of course, we're having to take into account the fact that we have a really short window to spend these dollars. They really have to be spent by this time next year. So uh, we're trying to minimize lengthy procurement processes. We're cognizant of the fact that uh, we don't wanna necessarily be investing in, in services that uh, require lengthier subscriptions and, and other kinds of needs that we have to take into account given the one-time only nature of this funding. Um, Kara, I'm gonna ask you to just describe at a high level how we're rolling out the plans to spend these, these dollars. Sure, well, our efforts are already underway once we got the green light from the commission and working with our contracts manager, John Kilgar, to get the uh, go ahead from state procurement to make sure we're within our authority to to uh, expand our contracts that are existing. Uh, we are starting with Montana Library to go, which was one of the top priorities in the uh, results we got from the library community. Uh, we have already deposited $120,000 in the content budget for Montana Library to go. Also, uh, people who are using Libby will notice some new resources in there already. We have added uh, access to a resource called Universal Class, which some of you will be interested or familiar with. Um, it is a lifelong learning resource that provides uh, uh, self-paced continuing education courses in a variety of topics. There are hundreds of courses available. Um, and when you go in through Libby or through the URL that is uh, prepended with Montana Library to go, then you can uh, just to sign in as a Bonta Library to Go user and have access to that. So that's essentially available to all Montanans who have a library card since we are nearly a statewide consortium at this point. We also have a test prep, ACT, SAT test prep service available through Libby now, which is called Method Test Prep. And so that's one of the resources we've added for access through 2022. And for our school libraries, we have invested in the Montana Schools Shared Overdrive collection, and that is uh, the kind of the the school uh, analog to Montana Library to Go. They have um, age appropriate selections for K through 12, and we have um, a round of uh, an enrollment period coming up for new schools that would like to try out uh, OverDrive. And so we'll be starting that process up in January. And we are also investing in content that will be perpetual access, meaning it doesn't expire. We have it, we buy it, and we own it forever. In, in a uh, pilot of the what's going to be called the Palace app, it's through the Digital Public Library of America. And we're focusing on teen YA content to um, enhance that collection that is going to be available to all libraries. So we'll be rolling that out in early 2022 as well. So those are the, the top two priorities. I also wanna mention that we extended the magazine subscription in Montana Library to go for another year as that continues to, to grow in circulation. We will be extending the read squared contract for those libraries that are using that service as a summer reading online tracker. And we will also be investing in some short-term databases based on the recommendations from the library questionnaire. We are looking into a paper circ model such as Canopy to trial that. 
again, with the understanding that we may not be able to sustain it, but we will be able to evaluate the use of that, something that people have been asking for for a while. And we are purchasing a pilot collection of playaways for public libraries that have uh, signed up for that. And we're getting that order ready to go and hope to have those distributed in January or February. We will have some professional development resources for library staff. Uh, we've signed a contract with the People Connect Institute for some webinars in the early part of 2022. And um, so those should be starting up next month. We are going to have some funding for some additional online e-resources for library staff. And um, as was Joe sent out an email to Wired the other day about, and just mentioned the, the Moodle course for disaster preparedness. And we are putting together emergency planning kits for public and tribal libraries to supplement that course. And we will also have document recovery kits for every federation in the unhappy event that you should have to use that, that would be available to you. And then finally, we are going to be um, working with the resource sharing co uh, core services committee to identify some tracking and analytics software to help us to improve our courier delivery service and to um, help us to gather more data to expand and improve that service. So lots of exciting stuff coming up very soon. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. Kara, way to go. Super exciting. She and has been very, very busy. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I just shout out to, to Kara and John Kilgour and certainly all of the librarians who provided feedback about how to invest these dollars um, it's a really wonderful problem to have to have so many so much dollars to spend in such a short amount of time uh, and and Kara and her colleagues were very committed to trying to make the most use of these dollars in, in ways that truly meet the needs of Montanans and I'm just so proud of the work that they're doing so Kara thanks so much. There's two minutes left in my very last website chat with Joe Flick. Ah, uh, don't do it, Jenny. I mean, just say goodbye and be okay. short and sweet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. And and uh, you will have a, a brand new CE director coming on board soon. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they all do. Mm -hmm. Joe, thank you for all of your, your work and service to all of us and to the library community. You will be missed. I'll stick around. I'm staying active with MLA and I've already got my first gig helping a library with their disaster planning um, lined up for 2022 as a volunteer. So, so there. And you're leading a, a training for state library staff in one minute. So I should in one minute. Yeah. <laughs> so on evaluating training. So just a reminder, um, thank you for registering for today. And um and attending we had really almost perfect attendance so um that's that really helps me out with with aspen when you register and then attend and helps us keep all of our records straight so thanks for that everybody and have a very happy holiday happy holidays everyone bye-bye